गुड मॉर्निंग रीटा मैम उषा गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मैम हैप्पी संडे टू यू happy sunday to you as well and thank you so much for your early morning session taking out time for all of us my pleasure ma'am my pleasure anything for you and for istd thank you thank you so much ma'am i yes, enjoy your yes. day happy holy to you so i'm making you the host and i would be leaving if you have any concerns you can you know ping me sure ma'am sure no problem thank definitely you. thank all right you. thank bye you bye. thank you bye bye, bye.
Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, madam. Wear my headphones and then we'll start. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all. Good morning. Uh, yes, we have our air ropes on. And uh, let us, shall we begin? Shall we yes, start or do we want to wait for two minutes? Uh, we can wait for two minutes because uh, let us give them, uh, you know, the proper time of 8.30, three minutes are remaining. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, I'll wait for three minutes, as you suggest. Morning to everyone. Let us start by warming up a little. And uh, since this is our last session, and uh, since we're going to be talking about uh, one particular uh, one particular method of teaching today, and that is something which uh, I think all of us are familiar with. It is something that is rampantly done everywhere, abused, used, not, uh, you know, not, I would say, optimally used in the way it should be. Uh, let me ask uh, uh, all of you, how many movies can we remember, or any particular film that we can remember, wherein, uh, Students walked out of the class because the teacher was making it boring for them. Anyone? Yeah, let's Sunday morning, holy, and uh, we're all in a festive mood, I guess. Uh, therefore, let, let's start on this note. Over to you. Would anyone like to say something? So can you recall a film? Yeah. Three idiots. Wow. Okay, wonderful. Okay, and why may I may I know why you say three idiots? Can you recall a particular incident there? Come on. Uh, the definition of books. 
Okay, that particular seed. Okay, say there are books out there. What does he speak about books over there? What does he say? Uh, the teacher was insisting on using the, the bookish definition, the one that is written in books. In the books, okay. Uh, teacher was insisting on that, and the students felt differently. They felt that that is a better way of imparting knowledge, right? Thank yeah. you. Thank you for that. So, one book of three idiots. Any other? What else? That's the first one that comes to our mind, right? Which one else? Which other one? How many movies have you made on the teacher student relationship classroom delivery? Madam, good morning. Reporting, ma'am. Good morning, ma good morning uh, Mr. Aramitra. How are you, sir, today? Ma'am, uh, please call me Anamitra. <laughs> okay. I'll do that, yeah. So, good morning, Anamitra. How are you today? And, Fine, uh, ma'am. Thank you. Thank so you. We we were talking about movies early in the morning. Sunday is a good time to watch films. Oh, and, yes. Uh, right? So, uh, in how many, uh, I was just talking about which film reminds us of the teacher in the classroom, the students either walking away or making fun or doing things uh, in the class, you know, in the back, uh, in the last bench. How many of us have actually been last benchers, honestly? Can you raise your hands? How many of you have been last ventures in class? Only two. My God. Okay. I am sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, hi. Good morning, ma'am. Hi. Good, good I'm morning. I am not sorry, ma'am. This is Mayuri. Uh, okay, yeah. So sometimes it, I used to be back benchers. Not always. Sometimes. Not always. Okay. When uh, was it that the you movie were which... Movies oh, like yes. Mayhuna. Mayhuna reminds me of uh, the last bench and students making fun of teacher. Students making fun of the teacher and students uh, going gaga over the teacher. Yeah, That's also the, both, both are seen in the movie, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent, Dr. Mayuri. We are talking about, uh, you, know, you know, an adult learner, actually. Think of it, yes. You know, a very, very adult learner, Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah. yeah, right, okay. Yes. So thanks for that, thanks for that. Yes. Who else? Who else? Come on. Come on. This Sunday morning. And let's make life interesting for all. I of think us. maybe three idiots also can give a justice for that answer, I guess. There's one another movie called of uh, Aish with Aisha Zulka. What's Tell that me. movie's name? I've forgotten that movie's name. What's the plot, sir? What's the plot, Anamitra? Which way I mean uh, are you talking about uh, Jojita when you sit on this? Amir Khan? Ah, yes, 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 ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's where uh, the school is. That is a school scenario. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Okay. I can see Sarika has raised her hand. Sarika, you want to say something? Or oh, those of us who raise hands for being backbenchers, uh, you can uh, I mean, you can lower your hands now. Okay. Yes. Uh, I was not a backbencher uh, only because of studies or so. I was good, means better better in studies. But because mm -hmm. of my height, all the teachers used to tell me to sit on the last bench. Okay. <laughs> was that, okay. Incidentally, was that a disadvantage for you or was it an advantage? Uh, it was you. okay because my friend circle was there sitting behind only. So we enjoyed that time together. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus, sometimes, yes, it was because uh, there were few people who did not allow to connect with teacher properly. So, yes. there were positives okay. and negatives. Okay. So, the backbenchers did not let you connect with the teacher because of the physical distance is what you're talking about. Correct or just because you're too far away from the teacher? Yes. Is that why all your... your your friends were doing must be at the back and they were not letting you engage in the Yes, class. yes. That was also one. That was also one. Okay. Now, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Gauri also has raised her hand. Uh, would you want to say something? Okay. Uh, does anyone else want to comment, give me instances of films or classroom uh, scenarios? Good morning. 
गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग मैम यस आई वुड रिमेम्बर रानी मुखर्जी फिल्म हिच की वेर शी हैड फर्स्ट हैड अ लॉट ऑफ डिफिकल्टीज इन टीचिंग द चिल्ड्रेन बट देन वेन शी चेंज द टीचिंग मेथडोलॉजी दे वर वेरी इंटरेस्टेड इन द सब्जेक्ट एंड दे वर इवन ग्रेस्पिंग द नॉलेज दट शी वॉज गिविंग दैम ओके थैंक यू फॉर दिस and i'm going to ask you one more question over here since you spoke about she changed the teaching methodology is what you said what exactly did she do yeah so she was uh, while well, teaching physics so she took them on the ground and uh, like she uh, through tra- when she was teaching them trajectory she threw the ball to them and she explained how the reflex of catching and the angle of the ball and you even she used the basketball court to teach uh, them some uh, concepts of physics all right meaning she transferred the learning setting outside the classroom or did she do yes. it? i have seen this film so uh, no so she uh, she practically she practically mm-hmm. taught them the basic physics concepts using demonstration and taking them outside the classroom on the ground so she moved the she moved the students out of the class into uh, to an outdoor setup yes yes so basically physics is more like a imaginary concept like you need to the like the teachers generally use the board to draw the graphs or to draw the trajectories and uh, so children or students have to basically imagine things so instead of using imagination she uh, taught them using observation all right okay so she used observation and which she did outside of the classroom all right yes now this is why i ask you all this thank you for that information we we'll see how we can process that uh, a little later Uh, I can see that uh, Dayakar has raised her hand. And we'll just take one minute with Dayakar. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Generally, what happens? Uh, we are huh. intended to go for a classroom training, huh. but okay. there are some activities which can be done outside the classroom so that the participant will understand more easily rather than huh. a traditional classroom. Uh, we have okay. done such a program uh, in one of our training. and the response mm-hmm. from the uh, participant was amazing okay okay wow and what what kind of response did you get in terms of interaction in terms of participation or in terms of learning i mean would you like to comment on that uh, in terms of participation and learning also because uh, okay ha huh. they have been habituated for the classroom training since so many years and what mm-hmm. we thought is we want to go outside and we want to do a training uh, activity or mm-hmm. training session in the mm-hmm. park mm-hmm. so there okay. was the entire environment has changed and that mm-hmm. motivated them to participate actually okay. uh, most of the people will tend to uh, uh, be silent in the classroom because the entire environment some trainer will come and he will do some hmm. kind of session then he will leave so hmm. in that uh, the environment was entirely different so okay. that hmm. made them to participate on their own okay. so okay hmm. environment also play um, take some part in understanding the learners attitude okay whatever you are talking about right now i am writing in the chat box so good that morning, good morning madam good morning good morning uh, yeah yeah i am rajnish i am rajnish yes sir just join just join okay welcome and uh, we missed you in the last 3 minutes but i'm right. sure you will you will catch up okay we were just okay, having some fun and we were warming up when we were asking people to recall, recall incidents now, now there are two that i can remember since uh, all of you uh, i mean uh, gave one example one of course if you watch a lot of english movies you see a different kind of classroom environment over there against the uh, against the indian ones uh, having said that uh, english english was one film remember 
And here I'm talking about uh, um, English to English because these are all completely adult learners, if you think about it. All of them, I guess, uh, post their 30s and coming to class to learn something because there is a strong felt need for each one of them. You remember that particular scene where he asks them, when they, uh, David asks them why they felt the need to learn English. That's one. And then the way the classroom environment is different. But then today, we, yeah, I can see Mr. Sri Prakash also. Uh, if nobody wants to, I mean, if we can now move a little further. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about uh, what you call as the lecture method. Now, this is, like I said, like I told you earlier, the most discussed the most used, the most traditional, and the most debated method of, um, today I'm going to use the word teaching, because teaching involves training, learning, knowledge imparting, instruction, all of these. So let's, let's think of ourselves as teachers today, because the minute you talk about the lecture method, then the first word that comes to your mind is the teacher. Now let's do a quick exercise here. When I say the lecture, what 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 comes to your mind? Would you want to put it in the chat box or would you want to say it aloud? When I say lecture, anything that comes to your mind. Boring. Notes. Ah, uh, okay. Boring. Write it right in the past book. Okay. Passive, boring. Soon the teacher. Knowledge, boring. Everyone's writing boring. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what. Notes. Transfer notes. of information. Transfer of information. Notes. Okay. Uh, yeah, come on, come on, come on. More, more. One way flow of information. One way connection. One side. All right. Theoretical. Great, great. Listening. Uh, who said listening? Jeevan? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Why? Right. So I'm going to come back to you again. I'm going to write, that, write down your name. Yes, very good. One way, only one way communication. There, that is more. I expect more people. One side, one side discussion. Wonderful storytelling. Oh, sharing experience. Okay, yeah. Depends on who shares experience. All right. Igniting, igniting the uh, willingness to learn. I think getting people ready to learn. Wow, that's true. Otherwise, everyone's going to going to be dreaming of samosas and. Uh, Asushmita said, correct? Yes. <laughs> Information. Uh, right, right. Now look at all of these. Where are all of these coming from? Are these coming? I mean, there are so many. And if I sit down and take notes, the whole one hour will go away. You see me? Where are all these thoughts coming from? Are they coming from our personal experience? Are they coming information, discipline? Or are they coming from what we have read or what we assume? about lectures. You can tell me now we have passive personal okay someone says childhood personal experience. Okay. Uh, personal experience. So most of us have experiences and what did we feel? We felt that all lectures are boring. Is that what we felt? Not always ma'am. Not always, right? Not always. Okay. Uh, can we think of one teacher now this time I want to uh, I, I would like to hear from all of you one classroom experience or one lecture experience which you actually enjoyed. Which you actually enjoyed. Come on, let's 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 listen to this. Over to you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Who would like to? Um, one which you hear. Yeah, it's not an experience, but I can tell that uh, there were few uh, few instructors or the uh, teacher whose class we never wanted to miss. And okay. it was not only one odd lecture, it was uh, throughout the entire that six months uh, when he used to conduct the classes. So there were mm -hmm. two, three of them who uh, really made us interested in that particular subject. Okay. And okay. which I carried forward uh, in my life. Wonderful. So you said that uh, you didn't want to miss a single lecture. 
So yes. I'm going to ask you why and how. Yeah, how why? Is, yeah, uh, why? Uh, firstly, uh, the information which uh, uh, was disseminated or passed to us, it was hmm. something new to us. It was interesting. Okay. And the application hmm. of that was taught to us. How you are going to apply this in your future uh, hmm. career. So that was uh, told to us. And okay. the most important part was not the uh, not all the questions were answered, but hmm. uh, the uh, willingness or the, that light particular was ignited in us to learn more. So that uh, attitude was, uh, can say, initiated. And which huh. uh, carried us uh, through the uh, career. Okay. Now, I want to know how you ex you explain why. Would you want to go a little further and answer how? Uh, how uh, yes, he, was it a he or a she? Oh, uh, no. Uh, they were he. Okay. Okay. Is it and, uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. You're asking something now. No, I said how. I mean, how did that person... How did your teacher, someone you remember today, someone who inspired you, how did he make it interesting, or how did he make it relevant to you? Okay, so what there was, was uh, yeah. yes, ma'am. So there was uh, uh, this uh, combined uh, mode of teaching, you can say. So uh, the theoretical part was uh, taught to us. I'm an okay. engineer, so okay. the theoretical part was taught to us. And yes. how it practically, practically how it uh, turns out to be as per the theory that was taught to us. And then yes. how are you going to apply this in your particular, uh, uh, wherever uh, the work is going to be done by. Okay. So that is how we remember him. And plus yes. the uh, uh, style of teaching, that mattered uh -huh. a lot. Okay. Uh, so I'm writing of... notes now when you're talking. I'm yeah. taking all this down in my notebook. I'll probably put that together in a synthesis and send it across. Over to you, yes. sir. Yes. This is style yeah. of... Uh, yeah, style of teaching and uh, his class coverage. Uh, okay. The manner manner in which he used to interact with every individual. The okay. uh, questions which he used to preempt from the students. Okay. Eliciting uh, questions from the students. You yeah. said the manner in which it was taught. All yes. right. Yeah. Okay. And to keep the and to keep every individual's interest alive during that entire session of forty-five minutes or one hour. In fact, huh. uh, the class never wanted that particular uh, uh, lecture to be over. They, that, that used to be the uh, kind of interest he used to generate. And okay. apart from this, apart from the uh, lectures, whatever were covered, he used hmm. to give practical. Uh, he used to give the practical anecdotes uh, in life wherever it has happened. Such okay. kind of examples he used to do. He used to relate with the uh, real world, what, how it happened, how this was utilized at that time. So hmm. uh, references from the past, from the history, and hmm. the uh, real world, uh, the advancement which are taking place currently. So all this used to be related and given us to as a package. Wonderful. I think you have summarized today's session in a nutshell, sir, in a nutshell. So four or five things which I'm taking away from here. One, you said he always gave you the relevant implications of that. Utility of what was being taught. Application yeah. and utility of what was being taught. Here you are, uh, I mean, obviously speaking of an engineering subject. Secondly, you spoke about the style or the manner. So going a little beyond uh, what you said, when I say style, was it the speaking style or was it the manner or the style or the aura that the person created? Was it the way he connected with each student or was it his English or his language or his voice? What was it? Yeah, what it was, was it? all of them. It was all of them, what you said. Okay. In fact, yes. that is what we were looking for from an uh, instructor when he stands in front of us. Firstly, he okay. should be uh, confident. He sh himself should be confident. You should be able to uh, accept him uh, as your, you can say, not exactly idol, but you should accept him. Okay, he's going to tell me something uh, important or interesting. 
his mm. style of teaching he may not be a very good uh, uh, at language english language or hindi language so but you feel that's not required you feel that the language no, at, is really yeah uh, uh, at some at some uh, you can say in some of the subjects it is definitely required but not in mm -hmm. all subjects that specifically if he is able to convey correctly and very precisely what he wants to say okay okay <laughs> i'm going to interrupt here a little because i am reminded of that that was mr sudarsh right who was talking can you because uh, i can't see yeah yeah i have ajay ma'am ajay ma'am ajay so yeah. uh, mr ajay you know uh, that brings us back to you know our old earlier days when we would actually sit in the back bench and uh, which was not fair actually a lot of students would uh, make fun of the teacher's english or the language and that was something we considered uh, you know to be our first right not fair to the teacher right you say that yeah. the teacher and uh, sit and uh, count the number of pillars that the teacher would use right? yes yeah, sure. also okay, this is what i had a teacher who used to say you see you see and we count and he did 100 times or 200 yeah. times over not fair not fair but this was the thing that come out rampantly so uh not so much the language but the knowledge of the subject and uh, being able to connect with the uh, with the uh, with the learners about the utility of the subject and you made one statement which uh, i would like the entire class you know to think about in a generation which i am teaching today where uh, there is a clock behind me there is a clock behind me in a in a large class of 100 and some uh you know 5 minutes uh, for the class to be over sometimes you can see that the students are looking at the clock so that the class is over and they can all rush to the canteen uh, or uh, whatever for a break or for just for, for the whole thing to be over and that's when i know that i have to shut up okay and i have to let them go uh it is possible that uh, as a as a, a teacher or a trainer i may have warmed up a lot and uh, i would have just gotten into my element where i see who oh, i'm talking so well and the subject has come to a peak and this topic is going to you know uh, going to take me another 10 minutes but when i see the students wanting to move out for a break it's a cue for me that they have had enough and you are talking about a teacher whose whose class you never wanted to end you wanted the person to go on and on and with your permission may i say that uh, somewhere the teacher this particular guru or the teacher who you are talking about i'm deliberately using the word guru had ignited in you or had managed to get you engaged and gotten you to develop a passion for the subject am i right yes right? well after uh, in fact after the, uh, that i got an opportunity in my service itself i am from the air force Okay. and uh, after say about 10 to 15 years in service i got an instructional assignment okay. and uh, that uh, not not 10 to 15 years about 4 years in mm -hmm. service i got this and mm -hmm. uh, that was the best period in my entire 35 years of service which i did because okay. uh, mm -hmm. as a teacher that is the first time i understood how a guru can make a difference and mm -hmm. what is lacking in our entire education system we do not have good teachers who they may not be uh, you can say uh, the last word in that particular subject but they should mm. be able to ignite your interest in that subject if they do that they may not be very very uh, put in their uh, knowledge okay thank you thank you for that and i'm giving you a big hand thank, thank you, you uh, i can see that a lot of others have raised their hands i'll give you half a minute each uh, uh, who would like to start but i can see six participants have raised their hands so can Bam we shala? have uh, yeah okay okay yes okay how uh, yes ma'am i agree with what uh, ajay uh, ajay sir said right now one of the things mm -hmm. which i really like this was uh, when we used to have live examples a visualization process which the teachers took us through say for instance it was an accounts class so how debit mm -hmm. and credit would work or you know mm -hmm. how uh, a profit and loss statement would work how a balance sheet would work with live examples so okay. we all have learned through in, uh, we all learned uh, differentiation and integration in 12th mm. standard but when mm. we came into college it was application into economics okay. 
like okay. how would you start the graphs and all uh, so we had this uh, live examples say for taking a present scenario a present okay. stage scenario and how this thing can could be applied so the case studies which i uh, which i realized the case studies how this process has been applied was one of okay. the ways also where we could use our uh, we could understand the application that it is uh, it's just not integration and differentiation with such big names it is how you know it is applicable even like ma'am we have statistics histograms and stuff like that so that was mm. taught as in how the market how it applies to the mm. market in present as okay. well in the previous case studies along with the case studies this was this concept was explained to us so i really remember that during my graduation time that mm. uh, it made us uh, easy to understand how things are going and that applies everywhere even in cricket or so we see that uh, mm -hmm. the same application is uh, seamless in all the uh, in all the sphere yeah wonderful wonderful so you brought in the case study and its application and the uh... You spoke about visualization. Visualization, yes. Visualization. yes Thank you for that. Thank you, And uh, that you're exactly on point over here when you say visualization. Thank Thanks for that. Thank you. Take one more. I can see Deepali, Parul, mm -hmm. and Fayez. May I request that someone who's not spoken earlier can take this opportunity. So, who do we have here? Who has not spoken so far? Have, yes, I've not spoken so far. So thank you. All right. All right. Uh, yes. Sorry, I'm yes. not able to switch on my camera. Problem with That's some okay. camera uh, software. Uh, okay. So I, I think I'll add just to what uh, Nidhi and Ajay has said. Um, hmm. One more thing that uh, makes a huge difference is one is that you first, uh, you know, in the practical application. Uh, hmm. So I did my college in hotel management and when... It, it is a very live experience oriented kind of uh, grooming setup. Mm. But mm. another thing that makes a huge difference is, is the mm. simulation wherein we are asking a participant to come demonstrate. Mm. And when they mm. are demonstrating, the gaps is then called mm. out. But mm. another thing that adds true value is the appreciation that is coming to the participant. Time and again, mm -hmm. time and again, how are we mm -hmm. appreciating that person and ensuring the confidence level is high? These two things, mm -hmm. the way the mm -hmm. facilitator, the way the trainer is uh, able to ensure that no one's morale goes down and the learning takes place in the real time. I think these are two important aspects. Wonderful, wonderful. So you're talking about appreciation at the end of the activity or at the end of the interaction which goes a long way in making the learning outcome and over. also yeah. and also mm -hmm. i'm talking about yeah. that it's just not the observation about the live mm -hmm. event we are basically mm -hmm. making we are we are acknowledging the fact that everyone in the room knows let's say one particular activity then they have the knowledge we are making mm -hmm. them come and perform it and the moment you perform it is when you get to know that there is a difference between what you know versus what you act on it and where is the okay. gap right okay. like for example yeah. i'm talking about that yeah. i need i how this is the way to chop a potato we are demonstrating to them versus yeah. when you actually start doing it you realize oh this is the difference this exactly i'm not holding the knife properly yeah. because okay. you yourself are into it you're involved into it and that's where the facilitator picks it up that what went yeah. wrong why why do you think oh. it's going wrong right the, even asking the right questions. All right. Okay. So you actually helped us draw a comparison between uh, what you're saying, listening or learning passively vis-a-vis -vis learning through action. So right. that's what you're talking about right now has two terms in uh, our training methodology. It's either called uh, learning by doing or it could also be called action learning. But whereas, again, action learning is where you're, somebody's on the site. But right. learning by doing in the class itself can also be one way of making the lecture interesting. interesting. Right. So you're saying that to you, somebody tells you, and then you also try it out on your own. Am I right. right? Thank you. Thank you for that. And you've taken the discussion to a different level. All right. Friends, I can see. Thank you for that. Friends, I can see that there are a lot of raised hands. I will come back to you after I've progressed a little on my PowerPoint. Now, there are two things that I'm going to say over here, two things which I'm going to say. 
one i will narrate to you two experiences that i had from my own training uh, life all right uh, one when i was uh, both of these uh, typically when i was very young and very new and raw to the idea of becoming a personal trainer and i had just started and somebody told me that uh, one of our coordinators walked up to me uh, and he called me and said that uh, teacher tomorrow can you conduct a session on uh, conduct an entire day of training on time management and uh, me being me and i was so eager to become a trainer that i started and i was not well also in fact i had fever but then my my ambition got the better of me and i collected a lot of books on time management and i sat down and made uh, one i think or two powerpoints each for each session and there were about three sessions that i was given the fourth was conducted by somebody else and uh, something like time management i crammed everything into the powerpoints and i stood in front of uh, the crowd now there were uh, to my what a good luck or bad luck there were some five or six senior managers from hdfc bank and they had been nominated and they were all very experienced people a lot of good participants people who been with the corporate been there done that and everything that i delivered was through my powerpoint and i was talking of course i was very eloquent and i was uh, dressed very well so that's also something that i mean i was very good sari and i thought that i could carry away everything with my charm and you know with my smile people did appreciate me but the next day uh, one of the participants or i think the training head of uh, this particular bank uh, sent an email to the coordinator saying that your facilitator or your trainer was struggling with the powerpoints right and then i was called i was called and uh, someone who i respect a lot my own guru uh, he was i was reporting i just joined at that point of time he called me and he said how did you conduct your training teacher and i said uh, so i did it through powerpoint i made a lot of powerpoints i picked up books and i did that so he told me one thing he said uh, powerpoints are good but uh, you can't do your entire training through powerpoints your slide presentations only to summarize your training session which would mean that you use it only in the last 3 or 4 minutes the last 5 minutes would be your powerpoint session are we getting that are we getting that okay so this was one uh, and this i think i would suggest to all of you also if you know we are in the habit of using powerpoint uh, discussion throughout the session that's what the second time i was a little uh, you know now experienced into training i had been doing it for five or six years and uh, i was invited to train a group of teachers on something called soft skills why in this world i was invited to do a session on teaching styles and soft skills on personality development for teachers there again i gave a lot of activities but i was doing a lot of talk i was talking again and uh, after a week the person who had invited me to the training he himself was an iscd man and uh, he was very sweet he said ma'am you are very charismatic and you're very good you're very eloquent and everyone appreciated you but the trainer's place is not to talk the trainer's place the trainer should be in the corner and you should have got other people into an activity now why i'm telling you this is because i used in both these cases the lecture method of teaching and it took me a long time to understand that if i have to use a lecture method i will have to intersperse it with various ways to make it engaging for the participants and that's where our uh, friends a little bit of powerpoint now what i'm doing right now actually is a lecture x a lecture x are we getting the difference between a lecture and a lecture x would anyone like to tell me How would a lecture be a, be different from a lecture? Over to you, ma'am. Lecture it is time bound to the point, okay. and there is hmm. a specific format which you can follow in lecture it. And lecture okay. can be on and on, 
mm-hmm. lecture it is more topic specific okay. and i think it's more bounded by time lecture it yes 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 a lecture it would be a mini lecture within a lecture a mini lecture within a lecture wherein you don't start and like you said it goes on doesn't go on forever and ever it yeah, you can stop wherever you feel now i think nidhi herself for you you spoke about the case study right you spoke about the case study method so now if you're using the case or a case net and if you uh, want to summarize that if you want to debrief the case net you can use the lecture net in between two cases and you can debrief and that is where you as a trainer can can have your say you can say what you want to say without making the participants feel that oh my god this is boring or ek ghanta is ko sunna padega all right so that's your lecture rate for you so let's look at quickly uh, a little bit of powerpoint my friends a little bit of powerpoints you'll have to bear with me because this is required from your examination point of view also in this course so now uh, a few things which i said now what is a lecture what is a lecture if you are asked a question is saying uh, your book definition on training methods says that a lecture is a continual oral presentation information passing nothing new that i'm talking about over here all of you have already spoken about it and you're talking about your transferring ideas or knowledge whether educator is transferring the knowledge what i'm doing right now what i'm doing right now is where i'm telling you something now i looked at books on uh, uh, and then some uh, one one uh, one uh, one pdf which i will be sharing with you some research papers where they have also distinguished between the telling style of training and the lecture style of training lecture method of training so they distinguish between that now you are talking where the educator has all the control the teacher or the trainer says i hold the class i decide what happens over here and i impart knowledge i impart knowledge okay why because now just like i told you two examples i said this is what i learned at this so i am telling you out of my own experience it's a synthesis of my experience about the lecture method and since i have been lecturing for the last uh, let's say uh, 18 or 19 years right now i can put all of this together i can put in all my experiences and i tell you what is a lecture that's typically what a lecture is when the educator is or the trainer we have been called a trainer is giving his own knowledge or his own idea of what something is okay unless the trainer decides there is no active involvement on the learner side now i really don't know how many of you right now when i'm showing my powerpoint are actually on the computer or doing your own things in fact during covid during covid they also spoke about uh, i i i don't remember the name for that exact but i think they're talking about uh, the laun- uh, you know uh, the laundry basket lecture that means when the trainer is talking learners can happily go uh, fill up the uh, washing machine switch on the washing machine and come back or many other times you can also dry your laundry and come and come back the trainer is still talking did any of uh, is anyone of us doing that right now we are also taking care of our chores and uh, also listening quite possible right on an online lecture you can ask the, you can ask individuals to switch on their video <laughs> camera yes yes now this is what i think uh, um yeah. ma'am uh, sorry to interrupt uh, i think yes, there uh, I, i think learning and teaching when you are teaching i think it is it is just not one way it always go two ways so sometimes mm-hmm. maybe somebody so there are two kind two or three kinds of students which uh, some people will be working and still listening and their listening is that good that they are able to grasp knowledge so people will be looking at the ppt and maybe listening and still not understanding so there are different students as well different so i students. think mm-hmm. yes so learning is all about two ways communication so when teacher is speaking so uh, like 
uh, I think mm-hmm. Ajay was saying that he's an engineering student, right? So I am a commerce student. So when I was going through my MBA, I think I was uh, I was a student of law as well, company law. Mm-hmm. So whenever we are mm-hmm. talking about law, law, it is sometimes difficult to have you know practical examples because you have to even learn section, subsection, everything, right? For exam, so that point mm-hmm. of time we use uh, our professors use more of lecture method. But then mm. I'm implying them with case studies. We are discussing case studies. That point of time, mm. he's taking up all these lectures and uh, section, subsection to explain that case study in a very effective manner. So both mm. the things are coming in with the picture. So we are with the case study, we are going for a life example. And then mm. again, with the uh, theoretical part, we are taking the lecture part as well. I mean, the lecture method. Wonderful. Wonderful. In you spoke about different people synthesize information from the other side in different ways. You could be sitting in front of a PowerPoint or it could be sitting in front of the computer and yet not absorbing any editing, right? But if you look at, uh, thank you, thank you for that information, uh, you know, certain uh, programs, the MBA programs, especially the online ones with the IELTS, they are very particular that you sit right in front of the computer, you make eye contact, you're not even allowed to look here and there. Because they feel that the integrity of the program uh, would be uh, compromised if people get up every now and then or they're not glued to the computer continuously. That's their style and their philosophy, right? So there are different ways in which we're looking at. Going back to our, um, our uh, I mean, understanding the lecture method. Now, this is James Michael Lee's uh, Definition. Would someone want to read this out? That uh, the uh, upper definition. Would someone want to read it out so that it becomes uh, clear to everyone? Unless me as a teacher reads it out. Yeah. Someone? Yeah. <clears throat> Ma'am, this is Mayuri. Um, lecture is a pedagogical method whereby a teacher formally delivers a carefully planned expository address on some particular topic. Right. Also Not known as yes, yeah, continue, continue. Yes. Also known as transmissive method, based on the philosophy that the only teacher has immense know-how about the subject. Sorry, there's a there's a typo in that. Only the teacher knows yeah. how uh, you know important uh, is being right to. Yeah, that only only the teacher has immense know-how about the subject. So. In all purposes over here, the lecture method of what James uh, Michael says is that the assumption among the learners is that this gentleman or this lady knows everything there is to know about the particular subject and places a lot of responsibility on the person who is imparting the lecture. Look at it. Look at it. You know, and that's why all this uh, escalated or glorified or bloated assumption that I need to come to the class with a lot of knowledge and I will tell you everything that you should know about this particular subject. Now, what are the responsibilities uh, that uh, this puts on the trainer? Come on. What are the responsibilities? When I say that, you know, I have to plan, over to you. You have to deliver a lecture and based on this philosophy, that you know, this is transmission, that I'm the giver of knowledge, and that I, I know everything about this subject. What responsibility and tension or stress does it end up on you? Or what do you think? So, uh, the lecturer has to have, yeah. so okay. the lecturer has to have all the information about the topic he's delivering, and that too uh-huh. in the time in the time bound uh, process. For example, if that is one hour lecture, he should be um, very um, you should have all the information for one hour because it's a one-way process. Um, it's like uh, he should give all the information because as a teacher said, let like immense information know and how is only with the lecturer. So he should have complete information about the topic. And uh, if at all uh, the questions are raised, he should be in a position to answer. Okay. Should have complete information is what you're saying. That yes. is the assumption. What if, he, what, if, what if he or she doesn't know something? Is it okay to say, sorry, I don't know this? Yes, ma'am. I think it is okay because, but as per this philosophy, uh, Uh it is a lot of bounding on the teacher 
on uh, huh. on the trainer because uh, it is a set hmm. expectation that you know that he or she has to know everything so mm. that in and that is why if if there is a question answer which rises which is out of syllabus for instance because mm. it could be buried thinking then it becomes uh, uh, quite a pressure on the trainee and mm -hmm. uh, logically i feel yes it's okay if a trainer doesn't know something because uh, but as per the philosophy <laughs> that constrains mm. it a lot and i think that uh, hampers the uh, exchange of knowledge when the training happens wonderful wonderful Thank you so much for this, and so maturely mm. put together. Yeah, ma'am. I can I, hear. But uh, I would like to add something. Sure, Radhika, and then we'll take uh, Ravindra Singh. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. So I think previously, when teachers, when we were young, uh, obviously we didn't have enough knowledge to, uh, uh, you know, put in our uh, point of view. So that's why we used to feel whatever the teacher is saying is the best mm. of information that we are getting. But now that we've grown up and now that we are interacting with you also, we also have certain thoughts to put in um, in front of you. So I think now the teachers are more open into accepting that they don't know everything and they are seeking information from their students as well. So I feel previously that was not the case, at least during when we were in school. Um, mm -hmm. our teachers used to feel that's the best they know and uh, we are still young enough to share anything but now I think mm -hmm. as we grow up uh, we have also been given equal opportunity to share our thoughts and our knowledge which maybe the teacher might learn from us as well. Okay, so you're saying that as, as things have changed now the scenario has changed is what you're talking about. Right. right? right. Thank you, thank you Radhika for that. Ravindra, since you have, uh, you've been uh, wanting to talk for a long time, quickly, sir. Yes, ma'am. In adult learning, I think it is a uh, very uh, easy to understand by the trainers, by the trainees, that our trainer cannot know everything. But it is very uh, necessary to accept the trainer if it is if it don't know about the subject, because trainees expect only the knowledge related to the topic on which I am taking the lecture. They very well know that we, our trainee, our trainer is not well versed in all area because every subject, like banking, there are so many subjects. So they want only that particular topic must be known by the trainer. In other learning, it is easy to accept by the trainees. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. that's you it. think that in adult learning it is easy to accept today? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I leave that debate. I think Vandana wants to say something quickly, and then we we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll move on with our. Uh, Ma'am, yeah. actually, I would like to add, trainer, whatever information or knowledge, if uh, he or she is sharing, then okay. or delivering the lecture, then it is their responsibility that the audience, the students who are sitting there over there, make them understand. Whatever knowledge okay. they are delivering, make them understand. So mm -hmm. it should be like whatever language they are using, it should be easy to understand for them. So okay. actually, uh, mm -hmm. because whatever knowledge or uh, whatever information we are delivering to the students, that it mm -hmm. should uh, it is the responsibility of the tra trainer that they should mm -hmm. use the this kind of pedagogy so that the student easily can adapt and can understand it. Speak to people in a language that they can understand. That, that's your main point, what you're talking yes, about. Yes, ma'am. Right? Okay. You're buying another point, and that is where we wanted to talk about this. We said that you know, the key assumptions with regard to a lecture method is that uh, the trainer should be a very eminent orator. And I tell you where that is coming from, friends. I tell you where it is coming from. If you look at the. Rita, ma'am. Rita, ma'am. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Could you move your cursor? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Are you Thank you, now? Sure, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, two things. I'm going to skip a few slides and take you to the history of the uh, training uh, and the lecture method. And then I'll come back to uh, the types of lectures. Uh, look at this. Look at this. Now, I was, uh, we were looking at where has the lecture method come from. It's not something that uh, all of us have not heard of before, but for the sake of this lecture, Let's look at where. So all of us have heard of this term, very familiar, Gurukul, or you talk about the Vyakyan. Even today, people say, if you, if you, I mean, uh, at least in Maharashtra, there, there is, you know, we are, 
going to listen to a vakyan. That means somebody very knowledgeable in a particular area is going to talk at a different level, at a higher level to an audience and enlighten people on a particular topic. So Vyakhyan is uh, connected with the, can I say, intellectualism? Shall we call it that? Yes? Where we're saying, okay, I'll put this on slideshow. Uh, I think that is where I uh, got it. So we're talking about uh, the Gurukul where uh, in the earlier days, uh, youngsters were sent away from home to a Gurukul and you had people like Vashish or Vishwamitra who imparted knowledge to a set of youngsters. And at that point of time, it was only the Kshatriyas who went to learn and the Brahmins who went to learn the scriptures. And at that point of time, and even today, uh, I'm also going to speak to you about uh, Aristotle and Cicero. Uh, sorry, Cicero. As an aside, or on a lighter note, uh, you know, somebody was saying that if you don't know who said something in the ancient time, you can say Aristotle said it. And everybody will believe. Right? Uh, if you ask someone who said in management, we say if, uh, who brought out this concept, you say that uh, it was brought out by Peter Drucker. And everybody will believe you. Similarly, anything to do with the science of lecture, science of teaching, if you say Aristotle said this or propounded it, it's supposed to be sacro science. But this is the philosophy in the ancient Greek times or even in Indian uh, you know, ancient times where somebody who has good speaking skills, is a good orator, is the perfect man. You also had in the earlier days the madrasas and the maktabs and uh, again from the ancient universities, Nalanda, Takshashila, all of these were based on the concept of the knowledgeable person giving a lot of knowledge. And I deliberately use the word the sublime, meaning that you're taking people through your lecture to a higher order of thinking. And that's why, you know, one of the, I think Nidhi spoke about this, or Payal said that, that speak to people in a language that they can understand. Right? But here, when you're talking of oratory, you're speaking about uh, if you're looking at the Gettysburg Address, do we all remember? Government of the people, for the people, and by the people, the Gettysburg Address, where uh, uh, Lincoln spoke to everyone on his first address about uh, democracy and during the abolition of slavery. Any other uh, lofty or sublime lectures that you can remember? Come on, you tell me. Jawaharlal Nehru's name in the Trinity. The when we were attaining independence 1947 at the midnight. Excellent. <laughs> yes. Jawaharlal Nehru's address when we yes, attained the independence. Yeah. Yes. Nehru uh, was known for his oratory. Oratory, yes. yes. Yeah, Nehru was known yes. for his oratory. And people came to listen to him. Again, uh, uh, our, uh, our Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister today, Mr. Modi, known for his oratory. And he's a person who can speak to people in a language that they understand. I'll take you back to uh, Shakespeare. Uh, which, who can we remember? Yes. Someone who turned history around and turned around uh, uh, Roman people. Who was that? Who was that? How many of us have read Julius Caesar? Yes, ma'am. Right, I, I think mostly everybody to the have. Victorian period very well. You, you can even I remember the characters still now, like Motley Fool and stuff like that. Where <laughs> <laughs> I still true. remember their dresses also. That you know they used to they were only allowed to be dressed in colorful dresses the, and were allowed mm. to mock. No, right? Okay. So, think of that. Think of that. If you remember uh, Julius Caesar, uh, Mark Antony, uh, first Brutus spoke. For those of us who have been just to inform, and you can definitely uh, Google for Mark Antony's address. And uh, when he suddenly turned around the mob by saying uh, that uh, Brutus is an honorable man, he used rhetoric. So one term which I'm not put it anywhere in my PowerPoint, but the term rhetoric, where the use, where you can play on language in the lecture method and to win over people's hearts, and to get them to do something and also to address an entire 
group of people or a mob. So that's it, sir. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you because uh, we'll cover up a little. Please hang on there. I'll definitely uh, come back. We got to complete this. So uh, a couple of things. Why the lecture method, and what is the purpose? One, it clarifies. It helps you to expound and a whole lot of content. It actually, ideally, a good lecture should motivate learners to learn something. You can also use the uh, lecture method to review. When I say you give them the subject matter earlier, give them notes, and you can use or you can review the entire subject in a lecture. So one way of doing it, okay? And the biggest advantage of the lecture method is personal connection. Ideally speaking, when people forget about the online one, but in a in a physical lecture, you're looking at each person, you're trying to connect. A good person who lectures would be able to connect with each person. All right. So that's what we're looking at. Now let's quickly look at it because this is from our uh, content point of view and from the course point of view. What are the various types of lectures? that we are looking at now by levels of learner interaction. So there are three ways of um, looking at the types of lectures. One, we are talking about uh, uh, the level of medium, level of interaction, and level of content. First, when you're talking of level of uh, learner interaction, one is a formal lecture. When I say formal lecture, it's a very, very formal setup. The trainer or the speaker, that's where the term lecturer comes from. Even today, if you join as a, a faculty, you start with the post of assistant lecturer, associate lecturer, or lecturer, someone who gives a lecture. A formal lecture, you speak on the subject. Semi-formal lecture, where you know you may, uh, it may not be such a uh, tight environment. You may, uh, you may relax a little. A lecture discussion, what we had today was a lecture discussion when everybody was talking and the, the, the faculty was also talking. Interactive lecture, where you're getting people to interact, to propose their ideas, where it's not only a tell, but it's also a tell and listen. Let's all talk about something. I spoke to you about a lecture. A lecture is something where, you know, about a five-minute thing, which you can intersperse between other things such as a discussion, a GD, a debate, or a case study, or let's say a simulation. And to debrief whatever happened, you can use the lecture. So by the content, you're talking about the expository lecture or an oral essay. Let's say, uh, today I want to tell you about uh, about uh, different types of roses, okay, or different types of plants, or different types of dental material. Then I'm actually going to bring all the information and in an essay format, I'm going to talk to you, giving you an exposure. Uh, I, I will talk to you about wildlife, let's say. I may just tell you that, you know, I may give you information. So you're talking about expository lecture. Now, provocative lecture. Uh, what is a provocative lecture? Come on. Come on. You ask the... Uh, uh, it's a pro provocative is where you are actually uh, posing them uh, questions and challenging them to uh, speak on that topic. Okay. You're provoking, their, you're provoking them to uh, involve themselves into the uh, subject. Yeah. Ideally, a provocative lecture is where, you know, when you want to, uh, like you said, ignite people, get them involved in it, but also to do something. And uh, primarily, this is my opinion. You can correct me if I'm wrong. And I've been, provocation is where you're getting people to change their perceptions and their thoughts about something. Going back again, I'll take you back to Julius Caesar, where uh, Ruthus was, had already convinced people or the mob that uh, it was important to uh, uh, to kill uh, or to assassinate uh, Julius Caesar because he was 
fast turning into a dictator. But as what did Mark Antony do? He actually turned the whole thing around by saying friends, uh, Romans and countrymen, he called them friends. And then he started telling them that Brut Brutus is an honorable man. And he suddenly made everyone realize that Caesar was not at all a dictator. And that is how the mob entirely turned. Uh, I don't have time to show you uh, 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 Mark Antony's speech. I wish I had put that over here, but I'm sure you'll find it online. But that is what I would call as a provocating lecture, where you're actually provoking people to think in a different way or to change their insights about something. All right? This is my opinion. I could be wrong. You can correct me over here. We move on to what you call as a storytelling method. You tell a story, or you bring out an entire, you know, you tell a story. This, this is typically, uh, have you heard of something called a kirtan? Yes, ma'am. Anyone? The kirtan or uh, uh, pravachan? Okay, pravachan yes, is where yeah. you're telling people. But kirtan is where the, so the kirtan method was used by Gandhi to... Uh, uh, to actually get everyone ready to fight for freedom. And that I feel is a combination of storytelling and uh, the provocative lecture, a problem solving lecture. What's a problem solving lecture? Anyone? Come on. No, it's just problem? solution oriented, providing solutions, uh, discussing like a uh, discussing hmm. different options that could be a solution, analyzing. I think a maths class is a great example of problem solving lecture. Uh, Where, or a fishbone model that we use for analyzing mm -hmm. why, what, how will the things happen, why, what, where, how, such mm -hmm. kind of questions where can be asked. Yeah, okay. So you're giving the in the, yeah. At the end of the lecture, we do case studies and uh, there are multiple suggestions we provide and we give the solution of the questions, whatever has and, been asked. Yes. You I think, give a the, yeah. I yes, think uh, this problem solving is uh, you uh, commence the lecture by giving some kind of a situation uh, mm -hmm. which is related to that particular topic and then you mm -hmm. take the input from the class as to what could be the solutions of this, wherein mm -hmm. he also brings out the uh, particular aspect which is required to be brought out for that particular uh, subject. That, I yes. think, is the... Your a hypothetical situation. Mm -hmm. uh, hypothetical yeah. situation. Yeah. Hypothetical like problem situation problem. to provide and... Okay. Now, uh, in fact, uh, economics, you're talking about economics. Yeah. You, can, you can pose a problem, the current Indian economy, what, what can be done over Correct. here? It could be, uh, you know, petrol price or it could be the price of onions or the price of how do we sort out inflation or how do we address inflation. And then you take insights from everyone and finally the, the facilitator or the faculty can provide the solution through a lecture. Can we call it that? Okay. Yes. Yes. I think there's a lot of other people who want to talk over here. Over to you. Just give me two minutes that I cover this and then we'll have an interaction again. All right, I don't want to make mine a lecture lecture only. All right, uh, the third one that we're talking about here is my levels of medium. Now, more than ever today, there are so many ways through which and through so many different types of tools and techniques through which your lecture can be made more interesting, more interactive, and more, uh, uh, more informative, I would say, with the learning outcome becomes more optimal. Multimedia is something that we're using all the time. Video lecture, when you're saying video lecture, typically what you have in Coursera or Udemy, where uh, you get to see a series of videos and there are also uh, notes that come along with it. But there is something mentioned in our syllabus and that's why I talk I'm talking about it, the naked lecture. Now, I'll give you an example of one of my colleagues who teaches... Um, finance and economics. In today's day and age, when no teacher walks into a, an institution without a PowerPoint, this gentleman 
is able to engage the students for a neat three hours without a break by and not using a single video or a single PowerPoint. He just uses the whiteboard and he speaks and friends his feedback on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, is 9.5. Students don't miss his lecture. They come in hordes. He has 100% attendance. And he says, I don't do PowerPoint. I just engage with my teachers. Teaching without technology, just like that. And then you also have today, I mean, this is a traditional one, the chalk and talk. Teacher is writing and talking to you. All right. So this is so much. We're talking about types of lectures where you can divide them in uh, various ways. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So how can you make the lecture more enriching? What are the ways in which we can make it? And uh, since all of you wrote about lecture being boring, it is boring unless you find various ways to engage adult attention. And look at what are the things. And these are some of the things which have come up in today's day and age, and they're being used. Now, mind you, um, yeah. Anyone has any opinion on this? Shall I just uh, moisten my throat a little? Yeah, I think uh, if we are talking mm. about lectures, uh, I think mm. it is very much required uh, if okay. you want the students to be attentive maybe the recent you know we will just the third point if I see reels people are uh -huh. so much into reels and looking at short videos right now in YouTube so I think if we look at a few of the examples if anybody have watched 12th fail I'm not a very uh, very big movie person but I have watched 12th fail so if yeah. you see the way uh, he was teaching, so taking up examples from those reels and real life yeah. situations, and it is yeah. very much important. Definitely there yeah. is a, if you see at the course, I mean, complete yeah. classes full, there are 100 plus students and all. So it is very difficult for the teacher to, you know, go out yeah. of lecture matter and interact with every single student. So it is very much important for the teacher to interact, but then, they have to come up with something very innovative or maybe very lively so that everybody is attentive in the class. So they, they are listening to it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, a couple of things. I just want to share an example here with you. And uh, this is not an example. This is actually a study that I conducted on uh, different teaching methods with students. We wanted to know, we, we collected data for about 300 students uh, on uh, which are the methods that they, uh, today's learning generation, uh, which they prefer in the classroom. And uh, after conducting an entire survey, I was amazed to get, uh, you know, this information from the students that uh, a, a major chunk of students today still prefer the learning method. They like the learning method, uh, sorry, the lecture method. And uh, do you know why? Now, would you like to know why they said such a thing? I was really surprised because today, especially when everyone has a mobile phone, and like all of you said that they have, uh, they already have information, knowledge which is already there, and they would like to learn by doing. Few of the reasons that they gave. One, and uh, friends, this is very serious because uh, it opened my eyes. They said that in the name of using different techniques, and to sound a little modern, to look a little modern, teachers try to use a lot of other methods such as, let's say, simulation, sorry, simulation, case study, brainstorming, or outbound, or whatever, or class activity, especially the team activity, without knowing how to use it and how to debrief it. And they said, in all of that, sometimes the learning of the subject is lost. Friends, are you getting me? Okay. Since I'm yes, not prepared yes, for my class, I yes, put everybody in my team activity. And I say, chalo, aap log kuch to karo, the teacher gets to move out of the class. 
Are you getting? I've not done my homework. My so I can tell everyone discuss a case study because I have not studied my subject properly, right? So a lot of times the students today prefer the lecture method because they don't want to read about the subject. They would rather get it from the teacher. Part of the other reason is also if you're forced to be in a classroom, then you know you become passive. They say, okay, you teach, and I decide whether I want to listen or I don't want to listen. Are we getting that? Are we getting that? They say, okay, teach. Okay, it's your job to yes, teach. Sir. You tell me the subject. Later on, I'll take the uh, PowerPoint for, from you, and when the exams come, I will read on my own and I'll absorb a little bit. But it's something else that my friend or a colleague of mine also spoke about. So he said that if you have to use the lecture method, you have got to make it so interactive. And you can't expect that the student will listen to you right from the first minute till the last minute. Human nature to vary a little. So that's it. I'll come to you. I'll come to you in few minutes. Uh, human nature to you know uh, to wander where the attention wanders. Allow them to wander a little, and within your one hour of lecture, find your learning moments where you if you are expecting that the student or the learner. Will cram all the information that you have given. It's not fair. Even if that person is able to retain, let's say, twenty percent of what you've given them, your objective has been met. So that's it. Since you raised your hand, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Half a okay. minute because. No problem. Abhi jo aap bola lai, I just would like to continue the same, uh, like with yes. the adult adult learning. So hmm. a, a simple statement has been shared a lot by lecture madde. So okay. by lecture hmm. madde. Imagine imagine the the word that has become either like I should not use the word curse, but ha, wo ho jata hai. So okay. like, whatever you have shared right now, and hmm. what I wanted to share earlier as well that by the time hmm. I am not somebody who can tell stories, I hmm. cannot provoke, I cannot motivate. As a trainer, as a teacher, I think my lecture is almost like zero. Okay, okay. Which so, means that if you have to, oh yeah, continue, sir. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. Ha. I mean, it's very simple that it would be just simply whole soul my responsibility to deliver that in the manner what I want to feed the other people who are sitting in front of me. Yes. Yes. Okay. I can see that I see the NH, I see the NH two has raised a hand. I think. Then no, I have a question that. here. I have a question in your lecture. So, no, no, uh, no. do you think uh, that you know before uh, we conduct a training, uh, we should do some kind of a analysis or a survey that you know what type of model do they prefer for learning, so that you know we can accordingly proceed. We can definitely do that. It is very important to understand and uh, what I would say more than analyze to to appreciate that each person has a different learning style. Uh, yes, I agree with you, ma'am. However, I would like to say that if you leave everything to the learner's discretion, sometimes uh, knowledge that you want to get across may be lost. Now, uh, if you do an analysis and if you see that the majority wants a simulation method, then you'll have to find some way wherein you combine different styles within a particular method, and uh, that responsibility is on the trainer. And the trainer has to adapt. One of the biggest, uh, I would say, uh, skills of a trainer is. To be able to synthesize people's learning, preferred learning styles, and bring the knowledge to them, and take it to where they want it. So it has to be a combination of methods, preference plus. Every subject also has its own requirements of training methods. You agree with me over there? Yep. This I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Madam, as you uh, as you rightly said, the onus mm -hmm. is entirely on the trainer, and okay. uh, trainer should understand 
uh, and uh, that particular uh, requirement of the class is to be understood by the trainer over a period of uh, one or two classes and then you should be able to adapt what is the requirement and mostly you find that uh, the requirement or the type of uh, involvement they want from the trainer and the style which they want from the trainer it doesn't change from class to class if a trainer has uh, prepared himself like i'll tell mm -hmm. an example how uh, mm -hmm. we used to conduct our training the first okay. thing in the class uh, when uh, I, I used to take a class there used to be always a revision about uh, one minute uh, of the uh, uh, previous classes and in that mm -hmm. uh, uh, one minute is to be a rapid fire questioning so this makes people not only attentive it also makes them to uh, before coming to the class because they might be asked the question so they have to quickly in or the in the previous uh, day they uh, definitely have to go to the uh, notes second is after that you introduce that particular lecture what is it going to be covered mm -hmm. in between the okay. class they need to be given a break but break doesn't mean that they go out of the class you keep them mm -hmm. engaged by giving some kind of a quiz which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, conveyed on the board where everybody gets uh, uh, a, 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 you can say involved and they come out with the mm -hmm. answer after that give them a break for their uh, uh the water break or whatever you call bring them back to the class again align them to the particular uh, lecture at the end of the class the notes during the class uh, taking of notes generally was totally you can say prohibited but at the end of the class the trainer himself should uh, summarize and at that time they should be asked uh, the trainees to note down uh, take down the notes what he wants to convey and then conclude the lecture hmm. and okay. after that some classes uh, to be taken by the uh, some questions uh, by the class which as i said earlier it should be only preempted that these questions will come or they should come I thank think that you is how... for that sir. thank you thank you what you have spoken about is how the lecture method has been utilized i mean optimally harnessed by interspersing various techniques to engage uh, the the classes attention span so here yeah. we are actually talking about and cashing on the attention span of the learners so okay. two things one over here why we are talking about uh, adding to what you've said now a, a couple of uh, utilities of the lecture one they're economical that means you can keep a lot of people and that's why you have 200 or 100 students in the class more people at one time so when you are short of resources the lecture proves to be the best method and you are able to you know provide the same information to a lot of people at the same time within a short span for them so what skills i think somebody has already mentioned this earlier he said that what other skills in your singer incidental skills that you develop in your learners one is you are able to get them to take notes i insist on that in my class when i say note down even if you are going to get the powerpoint today student or today's learner does not want to take notes but ideally you should it should be able to develop listening skills of the of the participants that's one and like we already mentioned only thing is we have already spoken about this it's difficult to know whether each trainee has understood the concept and for that uh, i think the the method that you mentioned when you get them get people back send them out bring them back that helps to understand and maybe it be followed up with a one on one session all right uh now this is something i don't need to repeat to all of you over and over again but uh, since we have another 3 minutes of uh, whatever uh, there are ways in which we can use the let's let's jump at it effectively with a lot of planning like we said do a trainee analysis customize it to their learning styles uh a key and one of the most important factors and uh, i don't i don't think i've mentioned it anywhere in the in my slides or in my notes but i would like to reiterate one of the most important aspects or ingredients for a good student teacher or a trainee tra a trainer trainee relationship is that of the tone that you use and when i say tone 
a tone of equality, a tone of uh, respect, and a tone of warmth that can go a long way in making your lecture effective. How you use your body language, what kind of uh, hand movement that you have, all that we spoke about in presentation skills. All right. Uh, if there's one thing that the students don't like or the learners don't like, it is to be treated as if they are somebody lesser than the trainer and that, uh, you know, they are not good enough. So making, elevating their self-respect and their self-esteem a very big ingredient of the lecture. All right. And uh, that's where I was talking about when I said, uh, 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 now, uh, for example, if you ask your uh, uh, students, what is it that makes your, uh, you know, what is it that makes uh, you want your teacher, uh, I mean, or to come to the class over and over again? I was actually going to give you an example, but somewhere I missed out that example. But one feedback that I got from my students is where they said that, uh, and something that I have been observing, a lot of times I watch uh, faculty or trainers say, they don't even know so much, or uh, they don't know this. How can you assume that your trainees uh, know everything, or that you're uh, assuming that the learning, learner is at a particular level before you start off your session is one of the biggest mistakes that we can make. And we assume that each then use your body language optimally. I think the lecture method, the lecture method becomes a very, very beautiful way of uh, learning. All right. And I'll uh, I'll summarize with uh, this last statement. Since this is, a, this is something that is very dear to my heart and whenever I speak about training or new methods of teaching, I always use this particular quote by Rudyard Kipling to, uh, to, uh, to conclude my session where he said that no printed word nor spoken plea can teach young minds what they should be. Not all the books on all the shelves, but what the teachers are themselves. So, Ultimately, at the end of the session, what is the student or the learner going to take away? What you are as a person, and not, not so much what knowledge or content that you impart to them. Content is available everywhere. But it is you as a, as a role model that they are looking forward to. Thank you, friends. Any questions?